Now, when it comes to political predictions, I reckon the pollsters get a pretty rough deal. To be honest, when you look at our last federal election and when you look at the last US presidential election, a lot of the commentators just blame all their failed predictions on the pollsters. In both cases, the polls were very close. And if you looked at other factors, you could see that Scott Morrison could win and you could see that Donald Trump was certainly had, had a chance of winning. But there's no doubt that when they look at their fine art, the pollsters were very unhappy with their outcome. Not many of them actually picked it accurately. One man who did is Matt Towery. He's a very highly respected pollster from the great state of Georgia. I caught up with him earlier. Matt Towery, thanks for joining us. You're one of the few people who predicted the 2016 election result correctly. So many others got it wrong. Why? Well, I think in 2016, um, there's been a push in the polling industry to rely on cell phones, which we, we do as well. But so many of the interviews that were done back in 2016, they were long. Uh, they, they, uh, the cell phone calls didn't go very well. So they were getting a lot of um, individuals who tended to be a little more Democrat, a little younger, and that skewed the polls. Uh, we have the same problem going on this time, and I'm using the same technique I've used in the past to try to get around that and get to these so-called shy Trump voters just to get a better idea of where we really are instead of these polls that have us 10 and 11 points uh, separated between the two candidates. Well, you've sort of foreshadowed my next question, I suppose. I just wondered whether the other polling companies have learned their lessons, improved their methods, and whether they've actually got it right this time. Well, I don't know. They, they probably, once again, think that they're the ones who are right and, and I'm the one who's wrong. So we'll, we'll find out. I, I think that they have uh, tried, but the difficulty is that so many of these organizations, because they're used to the standards that are dictated to them by either the networks or by the newspapers, and I polled for networks, newspapers, you, you name it, I've done it. But um, I always do very short surveys, and I think that's critical. Imagine if you have a cell phone and you have a phone number pop up, you don't recognize that number to begin with, and then someone begins talking for about 25 minutes about a poll. The likelihood you're going to complete it is very low, unless you're someone who already has agreed to be polled, and that would make you a more hyper-political individual and probably, based on our research, a little more uh, in, a, in a sort of uh, profile that would be a Democratic voter here in the U.S. So I, I don't think that they've learned the lesson, but I don't think it's because they haven't wanted to. It's because they're sort of stuck in the old system of asking very long surveys to people who don't have the time to do it. What you say makes perfect sense. I mean, I never answer a number on my mobile phone <laughs> if I no don't know does. the number, as simple as that. Now, tell us about this, uh, I suppose, surge, you could call it, the trend in the polls uh, late in this election campaign, uh, Donald Trump closing the gap, getting ahead on some polls in some crucial states. Because more than two-thirds of the votes from the last election have been precast, are cast already before polling day, is it too late for Donald Trump to make up the ground? Well, probably not. We're, we're seeing that in a lot of these states that the, the traditional breakdown of the polling uh, of those who vote, have voted so far, is not falling in anywhere like it was last time. For example, Trump has lost some ground among senior voters, but he's gained ground among the youngest voters in the country, which is quite amazing. That's because of his response to COVID and, and Biden's uh, comment in the debate that he saw a long, dark winter ahead. Once we heard that, um, we started seeing younger voters moving to Trump, which was a big surprise. I never expected that. The other thing that we didn't expect is that African-American, African-American voters, who usually end up at about 5 to 7 percent for a Republican candidate for president, are right now breaking anywhere between 15 percent and 20 percent for Trump. And that's pretty consistent in all of our polls. So it's turned the race upside down. The surge that we see right now tends to be primarily Republican voters. They tend to be making up ground because they like to vote in person and they like to vote on Election Day. Extraordinary stuff. Now, tell us about what are going to be the crucial states to watch. Do we assume now that Donald Trump carries Florida and therefore we look further north to Pennsylvania as one of the most crucial states on election night? I would say that's uh, ground zero this, this time around. Um, we think Florida, Georgia, North Carolina will all end up being the in the Republican category, although you probably won't know about Georgia until the next day. They have some difficulty counting their votes. 
Um, we think that Ohio will be in the Trump column. Iowa looks like it's now in the Trump column. So you're getting very quickly, if you get Arizona and a few other states, you're getting to the point where either Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Wisconsin would give Trump uh, what he needs to be reelected. His best shot is in Pennsylvania. We have him up to Two, a couple of other polls came out today having him up one each, and there's one that has him down four. So it's all over the board. That's going to be a very tight race. I would look to Wisconsin, Michigan, and even Minnesota. I would say people, if they want to watch this presidential race and, and sort of look at the key states, I would be looking at those states because anything could happen in any one of those individual states I just mentioned. Okay, Matt. So when will we know the result and what will it be? <laughs> Well, um, you know, I, I predicted 2016 to our Fox affiliates here in the U.S. on, on the, the eve of the election. I don't think I'm ready to do that quite yet. It's going to take a long time because I think in Pennsylvania, you'll have ballots being counted for four days, at least after the election is over. Many other states will have mail-in ballots and absentee ballots and provisional ballots to count. I don't think we'll know the answer. Conceivably, we might know it at the end of this week. Um, it's possible we may not be, know the answer until we get into the U.S. court system, and that could put us into December or beyond. Extraordinary times. Thanks so much <laughs> for sharing your insight, Matt. Happy to do it. There you go, right back to where I started this show, Pennsylvania and that vote counting. Just think of it, all those millions of postal votes sitting there, not to be counted till the day after the election, and then more votes coming in from God knows where for three days afterwards. This is why this could be a long week. We will see.